Hello, everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal and our weekly segment with Joanna Jubilis of the Belmont Citizen Herald, which you can also find online at belmont.wickedlocal.com. And I'm your host, Mike Crowley. So, Joanna, we have a number of items in the news. And first, let me just say that we now have yes and no, no committees that are forming over the question of the April override on the ballot. What can you tell us? That's right. As everyone knows, there's a $6.4 million override question on the April 6th ballot. In response to that, uh, two committees have formed. They officially registered with the town clerk's office. One is for the override and one is against the override. And the No Override Committee is called No Override Now. And it's led by a, a longtime Belmont resident, Marie Warner. She's been active at another informal Belmont organization called Citizens for a Fiscally Responsible Belmont. I don't know if you've heard of it, but they've been very active um, attending meetings, asking a lot of questions. She's taken the lead on this No Committee. And she really is against the override now because she said, there are so many Belmont residents who really cannot afford another increase in their taxes, especially during the pandemic. There's a lot of uh, struggle going on in, in people. So she thinks that they, they, they've got to find another way and they've got to wait. Um, the, the Yes for Belmont committee is led by a, a Belmont resident and mother of three children in Belmont Public Schools. Her name is Nicole Dorn. And she has lived in Belmont since 2013, and she wants to ensure people of all ages can enjoy everything that makes Belmont a great place to live, work, raise a family, and retire. She tells a funny story of how she, um, she actually voted for the override back in 2015 because when she was wheeling her child in a baby carriage, she hit a pothole in the street and the, the child almost fell out of the carriage. So she was just... She was like, we got to fund, you know, we got to get this override to pass because we got to fund the road. So she's very passionate about keeping Belmont well funded so that, that doesn't happen to another mother. Um, and again, very passionate about the schools and, and keeping the schools well funded. Um, they both have Facebook pages and Twitter accounts. Facebook for the No Override campaign is No Override Now, Twitter is Override No. Um, the Yes uh, Facebook page is Yes for Belmont. Twitter is Yes for Belmont. And there's also a website, yesforbelmont.org. Okay. Joanna, I understand that we now have a new fire chief and it's his official. contract also has been settled. How are things shaping up with that, Joanna? Yes, so they, they offered the position to out-of-state candidate David DiStefano on January 21st, and they finalized his contract on February 8th. That basically means they came to an agreement on what his salary and all his benefits will be and when his start date will be. So David DiStefano, who is currently a shift commander and battalion chief in North Providence, Rhode Island, will be coming to Belmont. He officially starts March 15th. He'll be making 152000 a year, and he has a lot of benefits, including an unmarked vehicle of his own provided by the town. Uh, he'll have four weeks of vacation, 12 holidays, three weeks sick leave, and every year beginning July 1st, 2021. And then this is a three-year contract. So okay. July, 20, July 1st, 2022 and July 1st, 2023, each of those years, he'll get COLA increases. He won't be eligible for a, um, for a merit increase until July 1st, 2022. So in, in, you know, in another little over a year from this July, he'll get a COLA increase as well as a merit increase. And he's very excited to come to Belmont. He has to find a place to live within six months that's within a 15 mile radius to the border of Belmont. He also has to get certified to um, by the Massachusetts, you know, with Massachusetts Fire Chief credentials within the first three months of his start date. And then as of March 15th, our current acting fire chief will go back to being the assistant chief. That's Wayne Haley. He was one of the three finalists for the position. And um, the other finalist was another out-of-state candidate from Waterbury, Connecticut, James Peplow. But, you know, he didn't, didn't make it. But, you know, 
right now it looks like Wayne Haley's staying on as assistant fire chief. I'll go back to that March 15th. Okay, Joanna. So, um, you know, for those who've been following the fate of the, um, the ice skating rink here in Belmont, um, um, I understand oh, yes. that there may be a possibility that we still will be seeing a new a new rink. What what's what's the you know what's the story there? Sure, Roy Epstein, our select board chairman, he really wants to see that rink get replaced and he or rebuilt, either renovated or rebuilt at no cost to the Belmont taxpayers. This is one of his goals as a select board chairman and member. Um, so he's not giving up on that goal. Um, and what's, what's happening is there were plans that were done about two years ago by the high school building committee that showed that, that there is room for possibly room for tennis courts on the campus. But what happened to those plans, they, I don't know if you remember, there was going to be a public private partnership to rebuild the Skip Figlarolo rink and they were going to rebuild it bigger than it is now. And as a result, there were, wasn't room for tennis courts. And that's why the Belmont high school, the Belmont middle and high school campus, the new campus with the new building does not have room for tennis courts or they didn't think they did. But now that the public private partnership is not happening, it didn't come to fruition. It's like back to the drawing board. Maybe there is room for these tennis courts. So they're gonna be doing some investigating and they'll know by March 15th, whether or not it is possible to fit tennis courts on the site with a single sheet ice rink, just replace the rink the same size that it is. However, in the meantime, there is a CPA application to build one or two new additional tennis courts at the Winbrook Elementary School, because there's really nowhere for the tennis athletes to play, the high school tennis athletes to play tennis. If there aren't tennis courts on the new campus, once that officially opens and is complete, then they, they were gonna go to the Winbrook. So that is still happening. But if they find out that they can fit the tennis courts on the high school campus, then the Winbrook project will not happen. In the meantime, it's like two balls rolling at the same time and we'll see which one gets to the finish line. Okay. <laughs> tennis so, balls, might I add. <laughs> all right, so Joanna, we also have a new eating establishment that's coming to Belmont and it's opening soon, Trink Tish. What can you tell us? Yes, it's, it's pretty excited, exciting. I reported on this back in July, actually. Um, the owners of Craft Beer Cellar announced that they are, were moving to the former foodies location and their, their store is there now. But there's all this additional space and they want to use it to open a restaurant and they, they have it. They have the license, liquor license for it. They got that back in July and on February 8th, they got their common Vic license to actually serve food. So they want to start serving food at this restaurant that's going to be called Trinktisch, which is German for drinking table. And they're going to start serving food as takeout and curbside pickup only February 24th. And they won't actually open the, the restaurant with 154 seats and, you know, high tops and, you know, garden style tables and a, and a really long bar with lots of beer options and wine and uh, a menu that, that is German with uh, something called Kringles and Belgian waffles and um, rats and knox and German potato salad, chicken water zooey. I mean, all these things that really sound interesting. Uh, that will officially open the restaurant, I mean, in the 12,000 additional square foot of foodie, foodie space. That opens September 1st. But people can start tasting the food, takeout or curbside, February 24th. They want to wait on opening the restaurant because and having an official grand opening because of COVID. They said it's just not worth it to open, and that's why they want to wait. And they're hoping September first will be a better time for that. And it's exciting. It actually has two levels. They have an upper level and a lower level. If you recall, foodies, when you walk in, um, well, it's hard to explain, but you'll see when you walk in from the end, the back entrance to the parking lot, there'll be seating. On, on one level and then you'll go down the stairs, like you used to go down the stairs to foodies and there's a whole other level where the craft beer store is located, their new pantry is located and there'll be additional seating and a really long bar. Um, so it's, it's pretty exciting. Another restaurant option in Belmont Center. All right, Joanna, well, thank you so much for the updates and we look forward to talking with you next time. You're welcome, you're welcome.